Here are 10 fantastic whiskeys that I'm recommending to my friends right now. What's up everybody, it's Side the Bourbon Guy, and welcome back to my channel. We're gonna jump right into it. 10 whiskeys that I would recommend to friends right now. This one is so hard for me <laughs> because all the time people ask me, what's my favorite whiskey? You know, what should I buy? Whatever the case is. And that's always such a tough question for me to answer. My preference is going to be different than what your preference is, possibly. Even me picking out a favorite whiskey, it's still tough. I don't have a favorite. <laughs> There's so many different whiskeys that I enjoy for different times and different experiences. And I'm looking for different things at those points. So I can't just pick out one. And I can't just tell you to go buy something that's my favorite or it's gonna be your favorite or whatever. But I have noticed that as I start to ask people what do you currently enjoy, I realize that there's like certain whiskeys that I, I still kind of lean towards and recommend pretty frequently. So we're gonna get into it right now. Number one would be Four Roses Small Batch Select. Now there is a little bit of a price difference between this one and the Four Roses Small Batch. I think it's about a $30 difference somewhere in that range, but to me it's worth it. This bottle is an elevated experience from the traditional small batch. I'm very happy that this product was released and is available, at least in my area, sits on shelves. It is a good price point. It's one that you can buy and it feels like a special bottle. It feels elevated a little bit, like I said, compared to the small batch. It's one that if somebody's kind of getting into it, maybe they've had Elijah Craig, maybe they've had Woodford, maybe they've had these different products and they're wanting to get into Four Roses, the small batch select is a great product and it, one that I recommend all the time. All right, number two, Green River Weeded Bourbon. People seem to always be looking for Weller. There's a lot of alternatives out there. There's plenty of weeded bourbons out there that can give you not only the same experience or similar experience, but sometimes even better experience than what other products are that you can't even find. This particular one, again, available in my area around $35, $40 price range. It's 90 proof, it's weeded, so it's going to be more approachable. It's gonna be a softer whiskey. This one was a little bit sweeter, for me, a lot of jelly, jam, that type of stuff. I think I actually said jelly on toast for this review. It's one that's very drinkable, especially as we start to get to some of those hotter months. If you're into whiskey, but you don't necessarily want something higher proof, but you want something that's going to be more approachable and have a lot of flavor, then I'm recommending Green River Weeded Bourbon. All right, number three, Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Proof. You have to like proof <laughs> for this. That can range anywhere from, I think I've seen like 121, 122 proof to 130 plus. You have to like proof if you want to drink this whiskey. I think either that or you got to be able to add water and pour it over ice or whatever. That can bring it down to where it's a little bit more approachable. At that point, I would just recommend the Jack Daniels Single Barrel, which is already proofed down. This one, though, is a fantastic whiskey. I think with all the hype behind higher proof, with some of these allocated bottles that are really, really hard to find, trying to find an experience that kind of matches that is tough. I think we found it with the Jack Daniels Barrel Proof Single Barrel, and not only that, the price range of this is fantastic as well. I have seen it go away for a little bit, kind of harder to find, and then all of a sudden, at least my area kind of came back, and now I see it just sitting on shelves once again. If there's one thing about Jack Daniels, they have a lot of whiskey. <laughs> so even if it's a short time period where it's not there and not available, the good thing about them is that their products are mostly available, and if it's not, it will be available at some point in time. Great bottle, great experience, and definitely one to try if you have it. All right, number four, Makers 46 Cast Strength. My favorite is the Cast Strength, but I will actually say here, Makers 46 is great too. Makers 46 is one that I recommend to a lot of people that are kind of like, they tell me that they've had Elijah Craig, they've had Woodford, they've had Makers, that kind of is the next step for me. I think you've had Maker's Mark, you've had it in cocktails, you tried it neat, whatever the case is, but you're looking for a little bit more of an experience with the whiskey. I think that the staves that they add to Maker's 46 in order to get it to <laughs> be a different taste profile than the regular Maker's Mark, I think it does its job. I think that the 46 is an excellent product. I think that the cast strength I enjoy a little bit better. I think it holds up a little bit more in cocktails with that higher proof. I think it adds more flavor, but Again, just takes us in a little different direction, and I don't think that there's anything wrong with the regular 46. I recommend both of these all the time. All right, number five, Cooper's Craft 100. This one, in my opinion, flies way under the radar. This one is like a $30 bottle. I see it all the time. I see it everywhere. And when I did my review, I actually tried this with water, just a drop of water, and it opened it up way more than I thought it would, and I thought it brought a lot more flavor to the surface. So now, that's my preference. However you drink it, doesn't matter. <laughs> $30, this one's worth the try at least. Buy it and see if you like it, but from Brown Foreman, who obviously knows what they're doing when it comes to making whiskey, a fantastic product, great price point, recommend it all the time. All right, number six, I think this one 
will catch a lot of people off guard. Boone County Bourbon. These are the store picks. Every time I see this bottle that's a store pick, I buy it. It ranges from anywhere between six, seven, eight year. I don't think I've seen any past that, but I'm sure that <laughs> they probably exist. It's one that I got a chance to try before I ever bought it. And once I tried it, I was like, this is fantastic. This is a great whiskey. And I, it's one that I recommended at the time when this store in my area had their store picks. And then they flew through those store picks. And I think everybody got a chance to try it and realized for themselves that, you know, what is this? <laughs> this is a pretty good whiskey. So one that is definitely findable, one that a lot of people don't seem to be talking about, but it's one that I enjoy. Overall, this whiskey is fantastic. It's one that I recommend when you can find it. All right, number seven, Hard Truth Spirits Sweet Mash Rye. Now, Sweet Mash is referring to the process when they're making the whiskey, which the short of it is basically that they're starting over each time they distill. What that results in, in this bottle is fantastic. The rye whiskey is amazing and what they come up with as a finished product is, is fantastic. I did not like rye whiskey really that much a few years ago. I got into Sweet Mash Rye from Hard Truth and it changed everything for me. At that point, there was a lot of rye whiskey that was really produced from one distillery or at least kind of fit one type of mash bill or one type of taste profile, whatever you want to call it. But Sweet Mash Rye from Hard Truth kind of took it in a different direction. There's a few others that I've given credit to as well for kind of opening the door for rye whiskey for me. This one is still one of my go-tos. It's still one that I recommend all the time whether you like rye whiskey or not, but especially when I hear somebody say, oh, I'm not the biggest fan of rye whiskey, I tell them to try this one. All right, number eight, Russell's Reserve Single Barrel. This one is one that I love out of Wild Turkey. It's my favorite Wild Turkey product that's readily available. I know that a lot of people are gonna recommend Rare Breed and they should, it's a great whiskey as well, but the Russell's Reserve Single Barrel, there's just something different about this that I enjoy. I really, really love Russell's Reserve products as a whole, <laughs> whether it's the rye, whether it's a single barrel, whether it's a 10 year, whatever it is. Bonus points if you can find this that was either store pick or bar pick or club pick or whatever. Somebody that picked a Russell's Reserve single barrel. In my opinion, those could be even better. So these products are ones that I, anytime I see it, I'm definitely gonna buy it. I'm gonna make sure it's always stocked in my shelf or for people when they come over and they seem to really love it. So this one I recommend all the time as well. All right, number nine, Sagamore Spirit Double Oak Rye. I heard a lot about this one maybe a couple of years ago. And I feel like it's kind of like died off. I haven't really heard that many people talk about it. And I don't know if it's because the market right now is just swarming with different types of whiskey. And there is a lot of whiskey sitting on shelves right now in stores. So maybe people kind of got away from it, but I don't think you should. I think it's one that if you have gotten away from it, you need to go back to it because the double oak dry from Sagamore is amazing. I really enjoy this one. I think if you're not really a rye drinker, I think that you may like the double oak component to it. You gotta like oak. I mean, it's a double oaked product, meaning it went through two different barrels. But this one is one that I think that double oaking process kind of mutes the, the rye a little bit, but for me, in a good way. It, the things that I dislike about rye whiskey, it kind of helps bring out some of the better characteristics for me and makes it a better overall experience. If somebody's kind of getting into rye, and they're not familiar with Sagamore as a brand. I want them to be more familiar with Sagamore as a brand. The entry to that, in my opinion, is this double oak bottle, so I recommend it very frequently. All right, last but not least, number 10, Bardstown Bourbon Company. I'm going to say Discovery Series as a whole. Discovery Series has been one that, in my opinion, has been kind of up and down, and part of this is the experimenting between different percentages and blends and all the different things that Bardstown does. Now, for those not as familiar, Bardstown Bourbon Company basically sourced some of their whiskey while their whiskey was aging. And in the meantime, they kind of bent, made all these different blends and they called it the Discovery Series and they did different percentages, different blends, some whiskey from Georgia, some whiskey from Canada, some whiskey from Kentucky, some whiskey from Tennessee, whatever it was, and they blended different batches together. Now, I think those batches can vary <laughs> from batch to batch. I loved one through four, five through, I think like five and six, maybe for me, uh, just didn't really align with my palate as well. Weren't bad, but I felt like they were, lacked some of the balance in my opinion. But from then on, I think that they've gotten better and better once again. I know a lot of people are praising the 10 and the 11, which is right here. So I wouldn't necessarily say one particular batch, but I would just say overall, the Discovery Series is one of my favorites. Higher price point, we're talking a little bit over $100. Most of the time, I think it's like 120, 130-ish, if I'm remembering right, somewhere in that range. You're gonna spend a little bit more on these bottles, but 
I love the bottle design. I love what Bart Sound does. And I think that they are fantastic at blending, finishing, and now they're kind of showing us that they're great at their own products. If you're not really wanting to spend the money on Discovery Series, another one I'd recommend is the Origin Series. I like the Origin Series, but I think a lot of people enjoy it way more than I do <laughs> and love it. With that, I have to recognize the fact that it may not always align with my palette. It's good enough, but other people seem to love it. And if that's the case, then it's gotta be one that's on everybody's list. But regardless of which product from Bardstown Bourbon Company you enjoy, it, it as a brand is one you definitely need to check out. And that's why I always recommend something <laughs> from Bardstown Bourbon Company. And that does it. That was a very, very tough list <laughs> for me to put together. But if I had a friend that asked me what whiskey I recommend, not really even knowing where they're at or what they enjoy or whatever, I think I would go with these 10, keeping in mind that are they gonna enjoy all 10? Hopefully, but the reality of it is probably not. There's gonna be in some in there that maybe they don't enjoy as much or whatever the case is, but I hope that they find a bottle that they really like out of that list of 10. I think that's definitely doable. Probably find a couple of them that you like. If you've tried these, let me know in the comments which ones are your favorites. Which ones would you add to your list if you had to make it? If you haven't tried it, tell me which one you're gonna go out and get now. Once again, I appreciate all the support to the channel. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.